Hi everyone, my name is Lee Parvart and I'm tuning in from Toronto where I work for a small publishing company called Iguana Books. To celebrate today's global launch of Svevi Avatar, Persecution of Constantina, I'm sitting down with Maya Svevak, the author, to talk about the book. Now, as her editor, I may know the answers to some of these questions, but I'm so curious uh, to hear Maya talk in more depth about her aims for the, for the book and for the series as a whole. So Maya, if we could just start at the beginning, um, and I'd like to ask you, what is your book about? Hello, Lee. I'm so excited to have this conversation with you today. The day the Svevi Avatar novel pentology finally launches worldwide. In 100 Years of Solitude by one of my favorite authors, Gabriel García Márquez, José Arcadio Buendía invented the world of Macondo, according to his perceptions. Much like him, I created the world of Svevi Avatar according to what I envisioned the world might have been like had three key historical events not taken place. First, urbanized settlements usurping communities tied intimately to their ancestral ecosystems. Second, patriarchal social structures controlling women. And third, capitalism and greed-based imperialism subjugating the world's indigenous peoples and pillaging their resources. So, in the world of Svevi Avatar, the Americas, Africa, Asia and Oceania were never invaded by Europeans, or Europans as they are referred to in the novel Pentalogy. Indigenous peoples have lived harmoniously for 12,000 years and women lead most of the world's nations, with a few having such immense powers that they could annihilate an entire city if they so desired. You might ask where conflict is to be found then in this idyllic world. Well, it's found in a small settler colony of Europeans on the east coast of the continent of Kanata, what we in our reality call North America. A settler colony called Constantina, which has begun implementing a devious plan to conquer the world's peoples and extract what it can from the environment in its pursuit of wealth and power. I've written the novels, novellas and graphic novels of Svevi Avatar to be eminently engaging as a mystery, thriller, adventure and romance all rolled into one. But I'm most excited about the non-mainstream perspectives through which the stories are told. So, so the book sounds as if it's very keyed into um, social and political forces within the world, while at the same time viewing them through an alternate lens. I'm just wondering how you come to this and what your, uh, what your own interests or fascinations are that drew you to want to, want to explore this terrain in a fictional context. What is it that made you want to write this book? I've always been driven by an adamant curiosity about why human society and natural phenomena are the way they are. More specifically, I'm spurred by an inexorable need to understand why they're suffering. Suffering in all aspects, emotional, physical, social, economic, and ecological. In our global reality, many of the eco-social challenges we humans and the earth face are strongly correlated with who's in power how that power is used, what the cultural perspectives of the powerful are, and how the powerful treat the environment and other humans. So a true grasp of what afflicts us and why can't be achieved without understanding all of these facets simultaneously, both in the present and in the past. This is why my new book, Svevi Avatar, Persecution of Constantina, the first book in the Svevi Avatar novel pentology, explores several interconnected topics. If I had to choose, I would say that the four main topics are environment, identity, gender, and power. While it's not uncommon for fiction or non-fiction books to explore one or even two of these topics, it is very rare that all four are explored simultaneously 
even though they are intimately interlinked. Aha, uh -huh, interesting. What is your POV, your point of view, throughout the pentology, would you say? Thanks for that question, Lee. In addition to the four topics I mentioned being explored in the same book being a rarity, what is also rare is the exploration of these four topics from outside mainstream perspectives. Mainstream meaning Eurocentric, male, urban, Judeo-Christian, and non-Indigenous. So I decided to write from within an Indigenous female conceptual framework, but also present mainstream points of view in order to ease readers used to thinking in mainstream ways into contemplating and acting in non-mainstream ways. Okay, and so why did you decide to focus on these particular topics? You mean the four interconnected topics of environment, identity, gender, and power from non-mainstream points of view? Simply because we in materially wealthy parts of the world need to adopt different mindsets and behaviors in order to decrease human and ecological suffering. Now, before it's too late, and we've destroyed everyone and everything. For sure, absolutely. What, what would you say are some of the most common perceptions and misconceptions about books in your genre? It's interesting that you ask this question. I don't believe that the books of Svevi Avatar can be classified under any one genre. But much to my surprise, this seems to at best confuse and at worst annoy people. So the common perceptions and misconceptions I contend with are that Svevi Avatar is this, and therefore not that, or that Svevi Avatar is that, and therefore not this, leading people wedded to certain types of genres not to approach the books with an open mind. I suppose that could be a danger. Could you explain a little bit more about what you mean? Let me be less esoteric. One of the literary tools I've resorted to in order to more clearly dissect the cause and effect matrix underlying human and ecological suffering, is to create an alternate reality in which various key events didn't occur, as I mentioned before. Chief among these events that didn't occur in the world of Svevi Avatar is the rise of patriarchal, proselytizing, capitalistic, imperialistic, genocidal, violent, exploitative, and colonizing forces, and their subjugation of the Earth's people and resources. I go a step further even. In the world of Svevi Avatar, 12,000 years ago, a powerful female-led alliance of the world's indigenous peoples was established, which prevented the spread of the patriarchal colonizing forces, and thus the pernicious repercussions of imperialism until the beginning of book one of the novel Pentology, that is, when such forces try to violently assert themselves. So, of course, it sounds from all of this like your book falls into the fantasy category. Yes, and you and I have discussed this at length. When I was conceiving of the world of Svevi Avatar, I wasn't necessarily thinking about what genre I wished to write in. My focus was on creating the world, the characters, and the conflicts and exploring topics that are important to me. But it seems as though the phrase alternate reality leads people to relegate Svevi Avatar to the fantasy genre. I'm an ardent fan of this genre, but I feel that such a classification allows a reader to segregate the characters and events of a book from our lived reality. And in the case of Svevi Avatar, this kind of partitioning would be unfortunate because the books deal with multiple, very relevant issues, such as sexual assault, environmental destruction, misogyny, genetic engineering, racism, indigenous rights, colonization, cultural and knowledge misappropriation, climate change, and other realities we contend with every day. I believe that a classification as fantasy tends to lead readers and writers of non-fiction to dismiss the possibility that Svevi Avatar could discuss important contemporary issues based on science, law, and economics. From what I understand about the subject, it seems that Svevi Avatar falls into multiple genres. While written as a fast-paced mystery thriller adventure 
with a main storyline and multiple subplots to keep the reader immersed and entertained, the books also take the time to delve into the personal growth and evolution of each of the f- over 15 characters. So, Svebi Avatar also falls into the literary fiction genre. Similarly, other aspects of Svebi Avatar enable it to be classified into at least the genres of magical realism, science fiction, spiritual fiction, and speculative fiction. So you've created a literary work that's crossed genre or genre bending, so to speak? I believe so. And I wish that anyone encountering Svevi Avatar for the first time would put aside any preconceived notions they might have about how the book should be classified. I wish that instead they'd allow themselves to absorb the prose, places, people, and plots. They just might find themselves thinking about and acting within the world in new ways. What are some of your influences? What are some literary comparisons in the genres that your pentology falls into? Since the books of Svevi Avatar cross genres, there are vastly different types of books that inspired me and that are literary comparisons to parts of Svevi Avatar. As I talk about each book, I'll briefly describe why it's similar to an aspect of the Svevi Avatar pentology. Jared Diamond's Guns, Germs and Steel explores potential geographical, ecological, rather than racial, origins of different types of human motivation, including imperialism, as does Svevi Avatar. Vandana Shiva's Stolen Harvest and Ram Chandra Guha's Ecology and Equity discuss the global economic and legal system that has enabled the theft, exploitation, misappropriation, and genetic destruction of biodiversity in food crops in Asia and Africa by Americans and Europeans. Thomas King's The Inconvenient Indian describes the horrors that First Nations, indigenous Canadian peoples, were subjected to by the European colonizers of Canada. These are all non-fiction books. Does your novel have literary comparisons in fiction? Yes, definitely. George Orwell's 1984 and Aldous Huxley's Brave New World describe dystopian realities in which police states and autocratic forms of government have stifling effects on human society, as does Svevi Avatar. Gabriel Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude paints a world created from one man's perceptions, a world where ordinary phenomena seem magical. Paolo Coelho's The Alchemist and Ernest Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea absorb readers into a man's journey of contemplation and introspection. Leo Tolstoy's Anna Karenina features discussions on political ideologies and revolution. J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings and George R.R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones are fantasy worlds with fascinating characters that embark on life-altering adventures. DC Comics' Wonder Woman and Marvel Comics' Black Panther feature strong women and people of colour who have superpowers and save humanity. And finally, Shashi Tharoor's A Great Indian Novel and Vyasa's Mahabharat are epics that chronicle the foibles and victories of humans across time. So you're saying that all of these non-fiction and fiction books are literary comparisons to your pentology? Yes, because Svevi Avatar touches on many different non-fiction topics and explores the world through many different fictional constructs. The books I mentioned are just a few examples of literary works that explore aspects of what I try to delve into in the Svevi Avatar books. Okay. How did you research the book? I feel that the world of Svevi Avatar has been forming in my subconscious for at least a decade now. Ever since I began working with indigenous and marginalized communities around the world, the more time I spent living among them, the more I realized how woefully inadequate and ineffective my urban university-educated mindset was. Being a product of a post-colonial society, the British having looted and disparaged my homeland, India, for centuries, I had always suspected that the Eurocentric, Abrahamic, urban, capitalist, patriarchal system 
of laws, economics and social mores imposed on the world was not up to the task of solving our ensuing and sadly still current crises of poverty, environmental degradation, disease and identity loss. The stories, courage, intelligence and compassionate wisdom of the amazing women and men from these indigenous and marginalized communities inspired me to create the characters of Svevi Avatar. And for those special characters, I created a world in which they had never been subjugated, their lands and resources never stolen from them. Was there any desk research that you had to do? And if so, what were some surprises that might have cropped up? Was there anything you learned that especially surprised you? The mechanisms and legacy of colonialism are very complex. And so I had to read books and scholarly articles on economics, trade frameworks, racism, identity, narcissism, gender violence, environment, capitalism, world history, religion, metaphysics, quantum physics, and many other subjects. I must say that what surprised me most was how nearly impossible it was to find perspectives on all of these topics that were not Eurocentric, Abrahamic, urban, capitalist, patriarchal. So I was compelled to develop an ability to distill facts from these various sources without allowing myself to be influenced by the cultural framework within which they were written. Interesting. What are you working on now? Ah, I can't tell you too much about that, Lee. I'd like you to see the finished product once I'm done. But what I can tell you is that I'm currently working on a historical fiction novel that features the profound love and friendship between a male and a female character who meet across six different time periods, one of them being the present. Amidst a tumultuous political revolution spanning the five time periods of the past, they meet and lose each other each time until the present, where their lives mirror the travails of the past. Anything else we should know? Yes, I collaborate with an amazing team of artists and musicians who have helped me create original artwork and music for the world of Svevi Avatar. We have two different websites, www.sveviavatar.com, the website for the novel universe, and www.mayasvevuk.com, the author website, and two different sets of social media, including YouTube, associated with each of the websites. We've put a tremendous amount of love and dedication into creating a multimedia experience for fans of Svevi Avatar. In fact, we've already published a novella and an accompanying graphic novel. Until, fingers crossed, the movies are out, there's a huge world of stories, characters, and fascinating places to immerse oneself in. And finally, one of the main reasons I created this universe of Svevi Avatar was so that through global engagement of its fans, together we can make a real world impact on the environment and people. A portion of all proceeds from the sale of Svevi Avatar literature and of future merchandise will go to support initiatives for social and environmental justice worldwide. Thanks for the insight into your new literary endeavor, Maya. It's been wonderful speaking with you. Thank you, Lee, for asking me such insightful and thought-provoking questions. And thank you for being my editor. I learned a tremendous amount as I revised the novel. I'm so excited about the launch of the Svevi Avatar novel Pentology today. And I wish everyone happy, happy reading. <laughs>